one of my hobby horses these days is trying to take back the term software engineering to really mean engineering, which by which I mean in modern engineering terms, the practical application of science. So, so I know they're not the same thing, but the engineering is kind of scientifically rational, is, is based on scientifically rational roots because it, because mm-hmm. engineering is the stuff that works. And yeah. sometimes I get asked, what's the difference then between craft and engineering? Because Software as cr- as a craft is 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 a an appealing idea to many people, and my answer is usually measurement. And I think you've just said that. I think I take what you're saying is the same thing, and you can measure you can measure almost anything. It's just some things are harder and some things are easier. But you but you should still be trying. Mm-hmm. You should still you be can, attempting. You can to measure, measure things. anything poorly, and you can measure anything well. Indeed. And to and to measure something very well, it usually takes more effort. Yeah. At least up front e- to set it up. Even the even the seemingly easy things to measure are incredibly difficult. I, I, have a, I had a background in very low latency systems, and we found that we were measuring things to less than a millisecond accuracy, and that wasn't enough because because the the curve was 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 the outliers were were, were kind of just at that boundary and so it all looked okay but some of them were, were re- you know the long tail was really horrible uh, the average was fine within within a millisecond response time and the outliers were were, were horrible and were not fit for purpose so it, so we had to get really complicated with some of the measurement for that stuff to get down to the sorts of measurement for the, that we we needed to do so so I, I think it's a really interesting take yeah and as like a random joke aside, right? Everyone's like, oh, well, surveys are proxies. They're not real measures. Anything you get out of your system is a proxy, right? Yeah. It, one, it represents something else to someone. I did performance for a long, I was a performance engineer. Anytime you tell me response time, I immediately hear performance because that's what it represents to me. Yeah. Also, anything you get out of your systems can be modified in some way, right? It could be interrupted by an electrical signal. It could be modified by even temperature sometimes. And so the things that we get out of, out of our systems are not always as reliable as we assume. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so I've, I've made this statement quite a few times and I'm interested to, to, to hear your, your reaction to it. I, I think that the, the Dora work was the first and most scientifically justifiable study of software development practice. I think, I think it's, the reason why why I think of it as being so important as a piece of work is that it puts our discipline on a more inc- intellectually sound footing. It allows us to reason about the things that we're doing more effectively. D- do you see it that way? Is 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 that an overstatement, or or do you think think that that's a reasonable statement? It seems perfectly reasonable to me. That. At the at the time, that actually that may have been true, especially if you think about the full. I would say it's true. It was true. I haven't uh, done a, a deep literature search in the last couple of years, but mm-hmm. um, I think, especially at its time, it was um, particularly. <clears throat> excuse me. When you look at the full end to end software process, right? Uh, yeah. Although you know, uh, we primarily focused on code to commit, code commit to code uh, running and production. Yeah. Um, there has been, and and there was like a lot of very fantastic and and fairly rigorous work. Um, but it was it tended to be focused on like small, very focused pieces. Yes. Because that you know many times that's how you do research, right? No, no research is perfect. All research designs have pros and cons. We have to think yeah. about you know limitations and and there's trade offs in research design. Um, but one of the biggest challenges of thinking about software engineering and software engineering as practice is. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you and I have had this conversation previously is that software engineering isn't just writing code or isn't just doing a test yeah. or isn't just debugging or isn't just this. It's about getting your software into production or into the hands yeah. of users or into a state where it is delivering value for some organization. Yeah. And with that lens, that hadn't really been done before or it hadn't been done at scale. Yeah. And so the fact that we were able to do that and do it year over year and replicate so many of our results, many, many years across so many users and then share that back. Um, I, I think I, I probably agree with. 
in 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 more recent versions of the here's where here's where my my scientific um <laughs> my degree of scientific rigor is sometimes tested i suppose but in more recent versions of the 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 dora findings it questions some of the things that i believe so i have to take the data but but I wonder what you what you thought about some of those findings. So things like there's there's a in I can't remember if it's this year's or last year's re report. There was a finding that said that continuous integration was cor correlate or related predicted more burnout in teams. That just seems plain wrong to me from my experience and my understanding of previous results. Do, yeah, there are there are a couple things going on. There's a couple of things like that. I think there are a couple of things, uh, and I'm uh, I'm not uh, involved yeah. in the report right now, so I, I'm like not familiar with uh, uh, many of the research design and, and decisions and analyses that happen. But uh, yeah. from like an external point of view, there have been a couple of findings that I <clears throat> haven't that I don't agree with, and it's not just that I don't agree with; it's that I think I have a a, a question with methodology. So one that comes to mind yeah. was that. Uh, I think it was continuous integration predicts negative organizational outcomes is one yeah. example. Um, uh, that that just on its on its face, right? That's an inappropriate analysis, and here's here's why, right? Uh, that to me feels like a spurious correlation. So a spurious correlation are things that happen to move together or apart, right? In this case, a negative correlation. Um, so first of all, I think it's spurious and I think it's a correlation, not a prediction. Here's why. First of all, it can't be a strict, and I'm using the word strict prediction. The word prediction, depending on the field, tangent, sorry folks, fast forward like 30 seconds probably, depending on the field that you're in, different disciplines mm -hmm. use the word prediction differently. So I try to differentiate the two by saying strict prediction, which requires longitudinal data and uh, inferential prediction, which can use cross-sectional data, but requires an a priori theoretical reason for that relationship to, to exist. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it can only be a correlation. Okay. Yeah. So based on that, there's no longitudinal data, so it can't be strict prediction. Right. Now, with uh, single point in time data, you have to have a reason, a theoretical existing reason to believe that relationship should exist. There is no reason to believe that CI should go straight to an organization's bottom line. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's no link. CI helps us deliver software, yeah. which can lead to organizational outcomes, yeah. right? When when we think through some of like the, the door reports, the door pictures, right? Like I said, I love boxes and arrows, but there is nothing that goes from a CI system to a customer spending money. You have to go through the feature that you deliver or the value that you deliver. There is no way, there is no reason, there's no theory, like as I go through many, many of the theories that I could think of from a theoretical standpoint, from a literature, from an organizational design or organizational uh, theory standpoint or a value standpoint that would go from CI straight to yeah, yeah. org, to org value. And so from that standpoint, like it's, it's basically a, a, probably a spurious correlation. There, there may be a reason for yeah. the correlation. In that case, it would probably be like if I were guessing, right? This would be this would appear in the discussion section of it. It would either be excluded, right? A reviewer would probably just exclude, saying it's yeah. probably spurious. If it would appear, it would appear in the discussion section, saying it may reflect the complexity of the software or yeah. coordination costs on the team or something else. But yeah, yeah, and like, I, 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 I like the answer. That 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 makes an awful lot of sense to me because. Mm -hmm. Um, that that plays to one of, one of the other things that I think is a common problem. I mean, we were talking a little bit about this before we started recording, but it's you know the way that you pick your metrics. I mean, one of the this is a this this is an overused word, but I think that one of the pieces of genius in in the state of DevOps report and the Dora metrics was that the metrics that you chose are important abstract enough to be entirely generic but but really matter to everybody that builds software whatever the nature and, and so and they're fairly actionable 
and like and you, they're you actionable. Can look at yeah, each yeah. item, and you can figure out some yeah, type yeah. of thing that you can do. Yeah, I tried so, to so, deliver so, some type so, of so they, they they provide they provide us a tool to steer uh, change and, and to and, and to, to guide us down a path to doing a better job. And there's not much in software that's like that. That's a, that's quite a profound thing to achieve. And I think that's the thing that kind of blew me away when I first came came across it was that of course these things these things measure the quality of our out the stability measures measure the quality of our output the throughput measures measure the efficiency with which we can deliver software my tagline for my business and my work is I often use the phrase better software faster because that's what your research says it says <laughs> if you do these things you build better software faster this clip was taken from my podcast the engineering room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.